Hello everybody, hope you're doing well and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be continuing on with our little mini-series we've got going on at the moment for Elden Ring, having a look at the most overpowered weapons so you lot can take the information from this video, apply it to your own game and have an absolute blast defeating every enemy in Elden Ring. Like I say, we've sort of created like a little mini-series now and we've covered a few weapons so far. So today we're carrying on that tradition and the next overpowered weapon that we're going to be looking at, as you can tell by the title on the thumbnail, is the Sword of Night and flame but as i mentioned earlier we're kind of turning us into a little mini series so if you want to see more episodes of this obviously make sure you hit that like button that's the quickest way of telling me that you enjoy this type of content and you want to see more let me know in the comments what sort of weapons you want to see in the future as well obviously i've got some lined up for myself but if there's a specific weapon you want to see a build on let me know i'm more than happy to do that and if this is the first video you're ever watching of mine hello my name is jazza if you want to subscribe to the channel we're on the way to 10,000 subscribers it's free and in return you'll be getting some really cool elden ring content and also some videos on starfield with help full tips and tricks so if those two games are something that you're interested in then this is the place to be anyway the reason why you clicked on this specific video the sword of night and flame it truly is an absolute beast if you have the right build tailored to it and obviously firstly just to show you where it is and how you get it we need to be going to the carrier manor which is an area you can get to before defeating any bosses or doing anything with the main story just come to lake avernia and head to the northwest side of it past the four belfries and then you'll get to the carrier manor and then as you progress through that area you'll come to the manor lower level site of grace and from here we just need to divert to the left normally you'd go straight on to carry on up the carrier manor but if we do a left and follow this path we can then jump onto this specific roof head down the ladder and in the chest in this room will be the sword of night and flame and then of course the most important thing are the stats for the build as with all the other builds we covered in the past it is a level 150 character so you can essentially do this in your first playthrough but it is more than happy to carry you through multiple new game pluses and of course starting off we've got 45 vigor 25 mind 25 endurance 12 strength and dexterity 50 intelligence and faith and then 10 arcane again this is a wretch starter build so all of my stats were 10 before i put the points into each stat but if you wanted to say use a different character to optimize this the absolute best I would heavily suggest anything that's high in either intelligence or faith this is because the stats that you need and are required to wield this weapon and use both of the ashes of war correctly because it has two ashes of wars are 12 strength 12 dexterity 24 intelligence and 24 faith so that obviously explains why we've got the 12 strength and dexterity and then boosting faith and intelligence as our main stats for this weapon as I mentioned just there you've got two ashes of war with this weapon and that's what makes it so unique and so powerful because when you guard with this weapon dual wield so holding lt or l2 if you're on playstation and whilst you're holding it if you then either press a light attack or heavy attack you'll do one of two ashes of wars so if you do a light attack you essentially have your own comet azure coming out of the end of the blade however it's not the same as the regular spell the comet azure where you can basically hold this down until your mind runs out it is only like two seconds of use um, and then it will stop doing the attack so if you're coming up against like enemies in dungeons or anything it can be really useful to take them out at range but ideally the main ash of war that we're going to be utilizing especially with this build is the flame stance which again if you hold the lt and then do a heavy attack you will then launch a wave of flames which just cover your screen annihilating pretty much anything that's on it of course, I'm going to throw up the talismans on screen for you as well, just so you know what I'm using to boost both attack and also slight defense. And of course, with any skill power, the best talisman that you should be using, if you're not, is the Shard of Alexander, as that greatly boosts the attack power of all skills on any weapons that you're using. So we definitely need that. That's our crutch for boosting that flame stance by a high degree. We've also got the Carrion Filigreed Crest, because again, much like with most of my builds, I love this, especially if we're utilizing a skill power of a certain weapon because it lowers the fp consumed by that skill so rather than having to put say 30 35 mind in order to use it multiple times we can just whack this on and it's essentially the same as having 30 or 35 mind at the cost of 25 allowing us to put extra points in say faith and intelligence 
in this instance to boost the attack even further. But then specifically we've got the fire scorpion charm which is obviously going to boost the fire damage which we unleash with that flame stance but unfortunately it will also lower our damage negation but don't worry because our fourth and final talisman is the dragon crest shield which again will vastly boost our physical damage basically counteracting the damage debuff with the fire scorpion charm. Also, another key tip with this as well, if you want to boost your stats even further, you can run the Goldrick's Great Rune if you want to have plus five in every stat as well, just to boost everything even further. If you want to do that, that's always a great rune that I use, just because the plus five in every stat is just so handy, especially when making builds, because it just allows a boost in literally every aspect of the build. But not only that, because we've got such high faith and intelligence, you can also mix this with either a slight mage build, or throw on a few incantations to also give you different variety when using this weapon. I don't actually use any, I don't think, in the gameplay that you're going to be watching, but you can also sort of build like a draconic incantation build if you've got things like the uh, Ancient Dragon's Lightning Strike or Landsax Glaive, even the Lightning Spear, things like that you can also mix into this build and have a good amount of range basically counteracting the Comet Azure if you're not going to be using it that much and just add a bit more variety to the build and also adding things like Golden Vow and Flame Give Me Strength just to boost the fire damage and your own physical damage so much more and give you again a bit of a boost in stamina and defense with both of those incantations so that's always nice to have so you could do that as well or even also have some mage spells like Terra Magica to help with Comet Azure but I'll be honest if you're going to be using this weapon for Comet Azure you might as well just be running a mage build because that's just going to be so much better rather than relying on Comet Azure on this particular weapon. And then finally for the rest of the stat boosts as well we've got obviously the Wonder Physic and in there I've got both the Flame Shrouding Crack tier which boosts fire attacks once again and then we've also got the Cerulean Hidden tier uh, which just basically allows me to use my incantations or the skill power as much as I want without having any mind taken away. I think it's for about 10 or 15 seconds so I can just go spam heavy and uh, yeah take on enemies with no consequences to mind and also just quickly I'm gonna throw these in just because I get comments quite a bit asking what sort of armor I'm using it is not a specific set as you can probably quite obviously tell um, but I do have a bit of a mix and match just to make sure that I'm still within the medium equipment load so I've got the medium roll but specifically for this video I had Lionel's helm the banished knight armor which is the one that you get for defeating the rare banished knight in castle soul and if you want a guide on how to get that I'll leave a link in the description down below for you and then I just finish it off with both scaled gauntlets and scaled greaves just because I feel that they fit the armor piece a whole lot better than the rest of the Banished Knight armor and they weigh a little bit less allowing me to keep that medium roll. But obviously more specifically the weapon itself is really really good at just clearing pretty much everything that stands in your way. I did try to come up against some higher end bosses in this video just to show that it can also be useful late game which it is but obviously specifically with the Flame Stance Ash of War you can tell it's probably really incredibly useful when clearing say hordes of enemies. And then for the actual damage output I'm going to be putting like a side by side of the damage output just on its own so with no buffs just the base stats and the weapon itself and also when it's completely buffed with everything that we mentioned earlier so you can see the difference and we are literally doubling the amount of damage that we're doing with this weapon it is literally insane but yeah I'll be honest I think I've used this weapon like a couple of times and even then I didn't really have the right build associated to it so I never really went back to it but that's the beauty of these videos is going specifically into weapon and delving into the stats required and making a build around it to showcase just how overpowered you can make literally any weapon in this game. Of course, as I mentioned all the time, I am not the best at Elden Ring. It's quite apparent with the gameplay that you're seeing in the background, most likely. And there's probably one or two things that maybe I haven't quite optimized fully so if there are any ways that you can make this build better i always encourage it to let me know in the comments down below if you think there's a way to make it any better than what it currently is because obviously that'll be handy to know if there is a way to make it even better than what you're seeing already but as always go and pick this weapon up it is an absolute joy to use it and it's incredibly fun to use in game so i highly recommend going and getting it and trying to make a build around it if you can as i mentioned earlier make sure you hit that like button if you happen to enjoy this video or found it in any way useful and if you're new around here 
here, why not subscribe? We're aiming for 10,000 subscribers by the end of the year. So if you want to help me out in reaching that target, uh, do just hit that subscribe button and join the already existing legends that are subscribed to the channel. But otherwise, that's pretty much it from me, guys. Uh, like I said earlier, I hope you're doing well. I hope you're having an amazing day. But for now, I guess I'll catch you in the next video of whatever it is that we make. Bye-bye.